Hey there YouTube, Jimmy with To The Top Crane. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, slings. We talked about shackles briefly on a different video. Um, then, so today I thought we would talk about some uh, slings. I'm not going to go into all the ins and outs on this stuff. I mean, literally there's pages and pages and pages of information out there on uh, the different kinds of slings, why you would use them. The advantages and disadvantages and whatnot but figured I'd touch briefly on them so first I'm gonna talk about this one this is a polyester continuous sling it's a synthetic web or a synthetic sling now in the industry a lot of times people just call all of these nylons and that's typically because in the United States nylon is the most popular sling material now when you go to Europe polyester tends to be the most popular sling material there's a reason for that nylon was developed in the United States polyester was developed in Europe so that's how that came about anyway keep my viewfinder open here for your slings to be usable they have to have a tag on them on the tag has to be the manufacturer's name or trademark, the capacity, what material it's made out of, and you can see its capacities in the different hitches, and that's what they call the different ways you rig things. So this particular sling is rated for 10,600 pounds vertically, so that's just straight up and down. 8,500 pounds is a choker, and that's if you had it wrapped around something and we're pulling up on it like so so it actually chokes the piece or 21 2 is a basket now one of the advantages of polyester is polyester doesn't lose much strength when it's wet where nylon can lose about 15 percent of its strength when it's wet the disadvantages to synthetic slings is they're very prone to being cut and uh, damaged by sharp corners and whatnot so you, you definitely have to use softeners if you're going around something with sharp edges or burrs um, any of that sort of thing and they're also damaged by heat so any of these synthetic slings uh, the upper limit is 194 degrees and it should say it doesn't say it on this one I know it says it on that one over there but this is a polyester continuous. The reason why it's called continuous is it forms a continuous loop. Now this is the end, and I'm not gonna drag it all out of here. This is the end of a four inch wide, 20 foot long nylon web sling. So this is made out of nylon. You can see it's got the manufacturer's name, material. This one has manufacturing date different capacities, width, length, and then this lists some warnings on it, which I doubt anybody's really gonna read this, but All right, I don't know if you can see, you're probably not gonna zoom in on that. But it says right there, do not expose sling to temperatures above 194 degrees. So the, the big thing with nylon is it tends to have a little more give to it so it's a little stretchier than polyester that being said like if you have something that is uh, fairly bouncy or whatnot this this can offer a little bit of shock absorption but that also means that it stretches a little more when you're picking stuff up so if you're limited on on headroom which is the distance between the ball and the tip of the boom or the tip of the boom and a structure above it then you may want to use polyester because it stretches less also with um, synthetic slings it's important to inspect these so they can become damaged like I said they can become damaged fairly easily by being cut but also heat damage and it doesn't have to be exposed to a torch um, to suffer heat damage if you have a loose choker started on something and you pull up on it too fast, the material sliding through itself can actually melt itself. 
so it can it can damage itself by heat um, but cuts abrasions you want to look for distortions from heat damage or discoloration um, some of these actually have and we don't have any of them because they're really expensive but some have a uh, fiber optic core that is built into the sling on the continuous slings and you can shine a light in one side and if it lights up on the other side it hasn't been stretched or overloaded um, like I said those are pretty expensive so we don't have any of those but that's a pretty neat feature but that, that's another thing you got to look for is make sure that they haven't been overloaded or stretched and these you can pretty much tell if they have been because this covering that's on the outside won't be loose fitting anymore it'll be pretty tight around it but the way these are designed this is just an outer sleeve that protects the fibers and it's just polyester fibers inside continuous polyester fibers these are obviously woven nylon fibers and th these can be made out of other things other than polyester and nylon I've seen Kevlar um, I've heard of Dyneema which think of your braided fishing lines for Dyneema um, but all of them they're pretty durable they they're easier to use than steel as long as you uh, take some precautions they're fairly chemical resistant as well but there are acids and whatnot will tear these things apart also you want to keep them out of the sunlight as much as possible keep them dry cool put away only get them out when you need to use them and uh, they'll survive quite a long time now I'll get into some of the other rigging that we've got and uh, explain to you guys some of the stuff on it. Okay, in one of my other videos, in the rigging video, I showed you guys these. These are foundry hooks. These are also attached to alloy chains. Now, foundry hooks, if you watch my other video, it's the only hook that is rated to be tip loaded so the capacity of the hook can be supported out here on the tip that doesn't mean that you can overload them but they are rated to be tip loaded they all, also you'll notice they don't have a safety latch in them they're designed just to be hooked into an item and take off with it the reason why they're called foundry hooks is they're used a lot in foundries now alloy chain lifting chain is about the most durable rigging out there the drawbacks to it it's extremely heavy I don't know what one of these foundry hook assemblies weighs there's four of them here each has its own ring they all have tag on them and they're rated for 35,500 pounds a piece but they're extremely heavy um, but they're extremely durable you, you'd be hard pressed to tear one of these up unless you cut it with a torch or an abrasive wheel or if you just overload it so alloy chains heaviest but toughest okay and then the other most popular style of sling or choker and typically in the industry these are called chokers but they're still they're still slings they're cable slings is the steel so what these are they're just a steel cable it's been uh, cut to a predetermined length eyes made up on the end basically they weave a Flemish eye and I can show you guys how to do that in a video and then they crimp these collars on to uh, secure it these have a capacity tag on them and you can see it's got the manufacturer this actually has a manufacturing date diameter length and capacities for various rigging methods so two and a half tons in a straight line 1.9 is a choker and 5.1 tons is a basket on these the biggest thing is they're very cut resistant but they can still be damaged but they get kinked and if they get kinked they're supposed to be taken out of service um, the advantages to these is they grip metal objects very well. So if you are uh, 
I'm like choking a piece of pipe to stand it up. This will grip it very well. And they're also fairly heat resistant. You know, you can you can use these in temperatures up to uh, I believe 400 degrees. We would have to we'll have to double check that for sure, but I'm pretty sure it's 400 degrees without any reduction in rating. If it's 400 degrees, I don't want to be sitting in the crane. But when you inspect these, and I'm not going to go into every bit of it, but if you look on this cable, I'm going to get my handy dandy bench made pointing tool out. Okay, on cables, cable slings, chokers, and even on your crane ropes and whatnot, each one of these is an individual wire. They group a bundle of wires together to make a strand and then they wrap the strands around a core to make the rope. The way these are inspected, as far as for wire, broken wires, is it's acceptable to have 10 randomly distributed broken wires in one rope lay. So what that means is if you follow this strand, if we start at this top point, and we follow this strand all the way around, to where it comes back up to the top point. The distance from here to where that strand started is one rope lay. So hopefully that doesn't confuse everybody. And let's see, looking on this one, that is from this point back to this point is one rope lay. So you can have 10 randomly broken wires in one rope lay distance so any one of these wires can be broken in 10 spots in one rope lay now that's for all the strands you can have five broken spots or broken wires in one strand in one rope lay so if you follow this one strand all the way around to a continuous lay so from here to here in that one strand, you're permitted to have five broken spots in the wire. If you have more than that, it's trash. And if you need clarification on that, there's a ton of information on the World Wide Web about cable inspection. Also, bird caging is uh, another one. If this thing, if you twist it backwards, you can actually pull the strands away from the core and it'll stay distorted that way that's called bird caging um, heavy rust and corrosion heat damage if someone got a torch up next to it or abrasive wheel would cut your wires um, that's the sort of things that would put this out of service so hopefully that doesn't confuse everybody I know when it comes to wire and or wire rope inspection that can be uh, a little confusing and then I've got one other piece of rigging over here that is new to us that I'm going to show you guys. It, uh, it's kind of a weird alloy chain sling, but we've got it for unloading coil steel out of barges on the Missouri River. And we're going to be actually doing that Monday and Tuesday, so you guys will get to see that. Okay, these are new to us. I'm not even sure where we bought them. I'd have to check with the office and see. But these are alloy chain slings for handling pretty extreme amounts of weight for their size. Now I say for their size relatively. These are 16 feet long each and they weigh a little over 200 pounds a piece. But what we have is an attachment plate that at each end so that would go in the hook of the crane. And off the attachment point is four sets of half inch chain that are bundled together with cables so it acts as one unit and uh, these are rated only for basket lifting so if we look at the tag you guys may have a tough time reading that so it's rated for 96,000 pounds as a vertical basket like I said each one 16 feet long number of legs is one half inch grade eight it's 
got a serial number, manufacturer stamp, when it was built. So you guys will get to see these in action um, coming up here real soon. I think today's Friday. We've got a barge coming in, actually two barges coming in Monday and Tuesday full of coiled steel. So these were purchased for the sole purpose of hoisting coiled steel out of a barge. I'm glad I don't have to rig them because they are heavy. So yeah. But these things, these are alloy, specialty alloy lifting slings. Okay, while we're on the subject, and this, I shouldn't even have to say this, but I'm going to. These, everybody knows what these are. These are pretty tight. Um, these are tie down straps, ratchet tie downs. These are not approved for lifting. So don't just take that out throw a knot in it and make a continuous loop out of it and use that for lifting. That 3,300 pound load rating on there, that means it can exert 3,300 pounds of holding force on a load on a trailer. So don't use that for lifting. These are not rated for lifting. These are log chains or tie down chains, grade seven tie down chains. They're, again, designed for securing a load to a trailer. Do not use these for lifting. That, if you guys use this kind of stuff for lifting, you're just asking to get someone hurt or killed. So, not rated for lifting. None of this stuff that holds stuff on a trailer is rated for lifting. Lifting apparatus, like lifting attachments, slings, shackles, all that stuff, has a five to one safety factor. So its ultimate yield strength is five times what it's rated to handle. Your tie down stuff doesn't have that. I'm guessing, I mean, these have a working load limit of 3,300 pounds. I'm guessing not much more than 3,300 pounds is gonna break these ratchet tie downs. So don't use them for lifting.